What's up, divas? And what's up, divos? It's your girl, April. And you guys already know what time it is. It is Real Talk Wednesday. Okay, so yes. First of all, let's just talk about this. You know it's really Tuesday when I record these videos. Okay, let's just keep that in mind. So, got me some water. Got on my new shirt from Forever 21. Hey, babe. I thought this was so cute. What's so cute about it is it's in the plus section. And does Forever 21 have like these new um, sizes? I'm not really sure how new they are, but pretty new to me. Um, for the plus size section, they have 0X. 0X. So happy when I got two shirts with a 0X. I was like, okay, girl, you lose a little weight. Small on the top and just big at the bottom. So, unfortunately, my stomach has not gone down. But I'm not stressing myself because I have other things to worry about. Like my goddamn teeth. Alright, ladies. So, let's just get this on before y'all even be like, Why is you talking funny like that, April? First of all, I got two teeth pulled out today. And it was really supposed to be three. But... I was like, no, because I'm not mentally prepared for three teeth to be pulled out. When originally it was only supposed to be two. Or maybe it was supposed to be three. Either way, it was my decision how many teeth, how many of my fucking teeth I want to pull out. Mm -hmm. So as I was eating a nice pork chop sandwich last night, grilled pork chop, baked in the oven, nice thick one that I made. And I'm telling y'all this because I want y'all to know it wasn't hard. Like, you know, how you fry a pork chop, which I love too. Those little can get hard sometimes. Well, this one was not. I'm biting and I'm like, I'm just chewing, you know, minding my own business, chewing. I'm like, damn, what is that in a piece of meat? I was like, that's hard. What the hell is that? And then I was like, whoa, why is my fucking tooth so damn sharp at the bottom right now and it's scratching the hell out of my tongue. I am so depressed because my tooth broke and that was originally the tooth that was supposed to be taken out anyway. But it both it just broke <clears throat> and I was just so pissed off about it. Like I didn't even get the water open. I was pissed off and then I got so depressed like I just got really depressed because I felt like, damn, what is going on with my teeth? Like, if you have, like, really good teeth, then you're so lucky. Like, seriously, so lucky because I will give anything, like, anything to have, like, they don't even have to be perfect. But I just want them to look like something. You know what I'm saying? So the tooth broke off. And the other tooth he had to take was all the way from the back. I'm so pissed because you can't see it. You cannot even see it if I'm talking to you. But if I was to, like, really smile, it's over here. So I have a missing tooth, like, right here. It's, like, right here. And, yeah, back here. So I got a missing tooth. Right here on the side. I really didn't care if it was a missing tooth in the back. Why do I feel like a motherfucking redneck, but the black version? You know how rednecks be having fucked up teeth, okay? Some of them. You know what I'm saying? Like, you know, mountain people or whatever. Just from watching TV. So, I feel like a motherfucking black redneck. Like a light-skinned neck. Whatever the fuck you want to call it shit. Like, I'm like, seriously, like, you guys probably think it's not bothering me. But it's really, truly, is fucking bothering me that my mouth looks like this. And like... I just feel like, damn, like, you, you know those shows where, I don't even know if they come on TV anymore, but they're like extreme makeover, where the person thinks they've won, like, their smile or they won a makeover. I wish that I could find a dentist that was just, like, I don't even have to win anything, but I really wish that I could find a dentist that was just had a heart, like, really, really, like, a heart that really was, like, wanting to do something for somebody. Because I am so tired of my freaking teeth. And I don't even be wanting to smile. Like, when I see people that know who I am, 
sometimes I don't want to smile because of my teeth and like a lot of people think like now nah, I'm about to cry because a lot of people think like oh because you're on YouTube you it, you know what I'm saying I'm not one of those fortunate YouTubers who get paid like that you know what I mean I make enough just to pay my bills you know what I'm saying and make sure that my kids have somewhere to live and you know what I'm saying and oh my god I'm so tired like I just wish that I could find a dentist that would just be like, you know what? I'm going to do you this solid, and I'm going to fix your teeth for you. Anyway. Oh, my God. I, like, really am crying about this shit. Like, I'm so sick of my teeth. But anyway, so, give me okay. a moment. Woosa. Got me some tissue. Woosa. Okay, let me just woosa real quick. That was like a real, like, I just really fucking, I didn't mean to cry on camera like that. But sometimes I think, like, like let me tell y'all, I would be so pissed off about my teeth because I always have a toothache and my teeth breaking or whatever, my mouth hurts or something like that, right? And, and. It would bother me, but you know what I'm saying? I'd be like, okay, at least my teeth are there. At least I got my teeth. At least I got my teeth. You know what I'm saying? And so, you know, it would bother me. It always bother me. It, it, it bothers you if your teeth is really hurting, okay? So, let me tell y'all. It will bother me to the point where I just would be irritated and be like, you know what? At least I still have my teeth. At least you can't see them because they're all the way in the back. But today it really hit, okay? Really freaking hit because he took that tooth out on the side right here. So now it's a missing tooth right here. And then there's a tooth right here. Of course, there's a, then there's the, the missing tooth is right here. Then there's another tooth. And then there's another missing tooth. And then there's a tooth like... You know what I'm saying? Like, like, this side is all fine, perfect. But this side, it ain't even perfect. You know what I'm saying? It ain't even perfect. But it's way better than this side. But it ain't even perfect. And I got, I feel like I got this lonely little tooth sitting right here. Like, but you know what I'm saying? Like, oh my God. I just, to, uh, today it really got to me. Like, this whole thing really got to me. So now I feel like, damn, I got this jacked up smile. Like, seriously, a jacked up smile. The gap in my teeth, which I'm buying crowns for. Crowns is for two crowns is seventeen hundred dollars. So I gotta save that money to get those two. But I really want four, so I gotta get two at a time because it's thirty four hundred dollars, and I don't have money to just be throwing away like that. So all I was trying to say before I broke out so emotionally and distressed about the shit is I wish that there was a dentist that just was like, you know what I'm saying, seeing my smile on my teeth. Uh, and just was like, you know something, I'm going to do you this favor, this solid, and I'm going to fix your smile for you. You know what I mean? Do you know how fucking grateful I would be? That's all I want. I don't even need anything else. Like, true indeed, I would love to get a full makeover, like my teeth fixed, my stomach, the like, get a tummy tuck. That's it. I don't even need no new booty. I don't even need no new boobs, no new tits. Just take the fat out of my stomach and fix my teeth. And if I really had to choose, which one would it be? It would be my teeth. That's the one that I would give anything for, okay? Just to have that. And it's just so expensive. Like, literally expensive. And I've had to think about it. Like, yo, April... I don't really think about going. I don't. I'm not going to Mexico. I've done, heard enough stories to where it's like, no, thank you. I guess I'll just be paying a little bit more here, but making sure that I have the proper care. But today it really hit because now I have this tooth that's just right there, and it's like, okay, April, are you really getting that old? You got your teeth being pulled, and I got to get a partial in my in my mouth. You know what I'm saying? Which is fine. I got to pay for that. That's $1,300 or whatever. It's like $1,300, $1,400. Listen, I want that damn partial. And I will be getting that damn partial. Okay. It's just, I just really, it just really bothered me today. And now I'm like really, I don't know if I'm getting depressed about it, but it's really bothering me right now. So I... So because it was bothering me so much, this is the fun part about it. This is the pun. This is the best part now. Because it was bothering me so much, 
a bitch took a hit of some smoke. Okay? I'm just saying. This, yes. I had to take a hit. Okay? Of some smoke. Now, in case you like, ooh, what's up with... This is my new baby, okay? Matches my shirt. Hello Kitty bong. So it's all pink. And got the Hello Kitty here. And I love it. I freaking love it. This was a surprise gift to me from my daughter Tati. She came home from getting her nails done and came back with this. I was like... So she bought me, yes, my daughter buys me bongs. So she's the one that bought the red one. And I have another one, but I can't find it. So yes. So because I was so beat down about the whole situation, I had to hit that. And I think my mental state of mind was got really emotional. But I, I just... I think about my teeth every day. You guys don't really realize, but I be going to bed at night when I have a bad toothache. And I always, I talk to God and, you know, I'm not saying I'm really religious, but I do talk to God and I be praying about it. I be praying about it. Like I was about to say a curse word, but I didn't think that would be appropriate. You know what I'm saying? So just, I just said I was praying, but I be praying about like my teeth. Like, please, dear God, please help me with my teeth. You know what I'm saying? Stuff like that is what I be wanting. Some people, they be wanting, like, cars and mansions and Bentleys and jets and shopping sprees. I just want a new smile. That's it. A new smile. That shit is not cheap, for real. It's really not cheap. But anyway, so, yes, that's my morning, okay? And I'm sorry I was crying like that to you guys. But it just got me so emotional. And other than that, we're going we gonna, to we gonna go past it. We're going to pass that back. You know what I'm saying? At least you don't see the shit. Also, I am still doing my exercise. You know what I'm saying? I'm still walking and shit like that. It ain't easy, but you know what? It is what it is. Okay? Just be happy that you wake up every morning. And other than that, there's really nothing going on. Nothing, like, really, really nothing going on. In case you're wondering about this hair that I got going on, if you can see it. Um, I did the video. It was actually a lace front wig by Sensational. You know I'm all team Sensational, but I was not too teamed about this wig. Not at all. Nope. So this is what I do to my ugly or old wigs. I just wrap it up. So I did do a video on this and how I wrapped it up. And yeah, like I was saying, I got my new shirt from Forever 21. Hey, babe. Cute t-shirt. I love t-shirts that have like weird sayings or funny pictures or shit like that. I love t-shirts like that. I don't know what it is. I'm not like a real dressy type of person. I love to be casual. I used to love to be dressy, but I like some jeans and a t-shirt and I'm good. And some Toms. Yes. I have on some toms. Oh, you guys can't see it, but some toms, some black toms, and I'm I'm good. I'm actually really good like that. Yeah. So anyway, other than that, that is life. I got a couple reviews that I got to get done. One on this amazing mirror, okay, you guys? This is one of those mirrors that got lights. This one, you can either use it with batteries or not. You know what I mean? It has a USB plug in the back where you can plug it in. Awesome. So, I'm going to do a video on this. And that's about it. So, if you need a real talk, meaning you need us to talk some shit about you, what you've been up to, how you handling your business, if you want your business out there, send me an email to muffinismylovers2012 at gmail.com. Please make sure to put in the subject line, real talk. And other than that, yeah, let's get into this real talk. Okay, so this one is pretty long, pretty long, and I've been wanting to read this one for the longest, and 
just be running out of time. So let me get into this one. Hi, April. My name is Sarah, and I was hoping you might be able to answer a potentially sensitive question for me. I'm Caucasian, like almost see-through white. I don't have any friends right now. During doing the stay doing doing the stay at home mom thing so I don't get out much and I live in a super white area so no black people to ask this question to I grew up here and after being in the military and seeing so much diversity it was hard to come back and realize things had not changed anytime I mention things to other white people around here they just look at me like I'm crazy which could be true I've been trying to understand cultural appropriation more and more. I have to say that I really didn't get un get it until I saw Amanda Steinberg's video and then it clicked a bit more. I've always loved the culturally black hairstyles, dreadlocks, afro, super kinky natural hair. Seriously, love it. Drool over it. Want it. My mom knows I love the hair so much that once she jokingly apologized for not choosing a black man to be my dad. Although if I was half, it would have made things a little less surprising when people ask me where I get my shape if there's no black people, if there's no black in my family. On that note, what would you think about a white woman wearing the types of wigs you show in your videos not the loose curly wigs but the kinky curls like 3c 4a i know there are caucasians who have this type of hair naturally but for someone white to actively seek out this hair how would you feel you're probably thinking that i'd look ridiculous and that may be a fair assessment but would you feel it was inappropriate I would actually love if you'd ask your friends or viewers how they might feel about this as well. I've heard the arguments against white people having dreadlocks, but would wearing wigs be almost that same line? I feel like the world is in a place right now where we have to really start working to realize that other cultures have their boundaries and it's important to respect those. The black community is in a tough spot right now with so many people around the U.S. denying that racism still exists, when it's so obvious that black people, men especially, are unfairly targeted by the law enforcement agencies and media. It ties my stomach up in a knot that I feel like there's nothing I can do, especially since I live in such a white, dominant community. Please be honest and let me know how you feel about this. I love your videos, your wigs, your sense of humor. Sorry if I rambled. This is a hard subject for me to talk about because there is so much I want to say, but I'm honestly worried I'll inadvertently end up being offensive. Thank you, Sarah. So that was one of my real talks. Me personally, Sarah wants to know, would she be, would it be inappropriate if she, a white woman, a Caucasian woman was to wear black ethnic wigs like not like the loose wavy ones or the loose curly ones but the kinky curly ones like 4c or 3c how would i look at it what is my opinions what is you guys' opinions um you know something i that's kind of i don't really know if it's tough to answer that but this is this is how i'm going to justify her wearing that wig in my opinion Okay, um, this is how I'm going to justify my opinion, which is I think she should wear them because for one, it's a wig. It's a, it's a, a wig is an accessory to me. A wig is an accessory. You know what I'm saying? I wear a wig because I'm wearing these earrings today. I got this wig on cause this is how I feel today. When I want to get dressed up, I'm going to put another wig on, which is an accessory and I'm going to change my earrings because they're not dressy so a wig is an accessory for some people who don't have hair yes it is a way of life for them but it's also an accessory too because i'm pretty sure they got more than one motherfucking wig up in their closet okay but to other people it's an accessory to me i need it i feel like i need it but it's me it's actually how i feel so with that being said, I feel like she should have the right to wear whatever type of hair texture wig she wants. You know why? 
Because we, as African-American women, we have all different hair types. Some of us have hair that's straight. Some of us have hair that's fine. Some of us have hair that's that's thick and really, really cur curly. Some of us have hair that's really, really tightly coiled and curled. So we have a different texture hair. However, we put on different texture wigs. Today, I could have a kinky curly style, like kinky curly. My hair ain't even nowhere near a kinky curly hairstyle. I can never get a kinky curly hairstyle using my own hair. So I am going to go to a wig. So I can get that look. You know what I'm saying? If I had kinky curly hair, saying that if I was born with kinky curly hair, then I'm going to go to the store one day and be like, you know what, I'm, I'm going to give me a nice silky straight wig. But like the white girl got on in this picture. And I'm going to wear it. Okay? So if we as black people could wear silky straight wigs that look like Caucasian people's hair, why can't she wear kinky curly wigs that look like African-American hair. And she had the point. I have seen many white people, Caucasian people, with very tightly curled hair. Big old afro. So, to me, my, my honest opinion is, it's just motherfucking hair. It's a, an accessory. You gonna tell me that um, a white girl can't wear the style earrings? Because why? Because black girls be wearing these all the time, so the white girl can't wear it? It's an accessory, so you gonna tell me that my purse, which is an accessory, only a black girl can wear that purse, and the white girl better not be caught with that purse. I don't care if it's an accessory. That's what a fuck wig is. A wig is a goddamn accessory, and it's all fucking hair. At the end of the day, bitch, you taking that shit the fuck off. What should it matter? Me, personally, this is my opinion. Now, as long as you ain't fucking going around pretending to be black, okay, and saying you're African-American, and you know who the fuck you are, Sarah, then by all means, wear that motherfucking wig, wear it proud, shit. Who gives a fuck? And if somebody ignorant has something to say smart to you, then you know what? Those type of people, sometimes you got to just let it go and not even and not even bother combating them because some people are so ignorant and dumb that you arguing with them is just a waste of your time. Don't waste your motherfucking breath and time on somebody stupid that may say something dumb to you. That's my motherfucking opinion, okay? But as long as you ain't going around saying I'm an African-American or my baby, my daddy is African-American, as long as you know you Sarah then that's all the fucking matters. You know what's so crazy about it? I don't even know if this is your real name or not. But that's what the fuck I be calling myself, Sarah. Because I have my days when I can act like a motherfucking Sarah, meaning a white bitch, okay? Because I am I need to get some shit the fuck done. And I'm, or I'm at work and I gotta be on some different level shit. And you guys only seem to understand me when I'm being motherfucking Sarah. If I be April, y'all bitches would be like, why did they hire her? However, I don't have a job outside of the house. But when I did have a job, that's what I had to be. Motherfucking Sarah, okay? So, and I would put on my motherfucking Sarah wig, okay? Which was silky straight and be fucking Sarah. Play but I knew I was not white, all right? So, what I'm saying to you, Sarah, now... If you want to try the wig and you want to wear the wig, then just keep in mind, it's you. You're the one that's wearing it. Sometimes we have to stop and think. Me, personally, I'm one of those people that sometimes I still do it. I worry about what other people think, about how I look, about how I dress, about just me in general. But I, I don't do that as so much. You know what I'm saying? I don't do that as much as I used to. But what I'm trying to get you guys to see is... Who gives a fuck what you got on your head? Who gives a fuck if Shanae don't like it? Or Shaquita? Or Becky? Or Mary Jill? Who gives a fuck if none of them bitches like it or not? Okay? What matters to anybody don't really matter at this point. It's you that has to wear it. And as long as you motherfucking like it and feel confident about it and you happy with it, then bitch, fucking wear that shit. If you like it, motherfucking I love it point blank period if you fucking like that shit a bitch like me fucking loves it okay stop worrying about what motherfuckers think all the time because I have came to realize that 
These same motherfuckers that you so worried about what they think about you ain't doing a goddamn thing for you. They not helping you. They ain't getting you no new motherfucking teeth, bitch. What the fuck does it matter? You know what I'm saying? Sometimes we got to stop worrying about what people think about us. There is a time and a place when we should have to worry about it, I guess. But don't let it uproot your life. Don't let it ruin your life. If this is what the fuck you want to wear, wear that shit. Fuck it. Just fucking wear the shit. Seriously. And this is my opinion. Now, maybe some people may feel differently. I, Me, honestly, I really want to fucking know what the rest of y'all bitches think about the whole topic right now. Please. Even if you never commented, please comment right now. Because I really want to sit here and read all these motherfucking comments about this week thing. I'm, I really want to know. So please, just do it for me. And, and just, you could, you could write one word. Yes or no. Hate it. Don't do it. Whatever. Write it. Okay? So, now, <clears throat> on to the next. Y'all, I'm so motherfucking high right now from that bomb. So, don't mind me. There was this other one. Hold on. Okay, here it goes, because I was reading this in my car. Hi, April. Here is my story. All names are changed. I'm Amber, and I met a guy named Derek on OKCupid in September of last year. He lived in Philly, and I live in Dallas, so it was a long-distance relationship. We, click, we quickly hit it off and started talking every day on video chat and on the phone. Derek travels for work and would always invite me out to join him, but I declined until he could find the time to come to Dallas. So in December, he spent four days with me in Dallas, which was our first time meeting. I got him from the airport and it was instant chemistry and just like how we were on the phone. Derek and I ended up getting busy and getting serious over the next few weeks. I went to visit him in Philly in late January and stayed with him at his apartment for three days. He told me he loved me and he really opened up about me moving to Philly and getting a house with him. So I get back to Dallas and I'm on cloud nine, but deep down something didn't feel right. Now I have run background checks on any guy I met online and I ran one on Derek in December and found nothing. So I kept telling myself, girl, you are being paranoid. The next day, Derek and I were on the phone, and he told me he loved me again. I never said it in return. He said, I know you love me too, and I'll be patient for you to say it. I felt something was off again once he got off the phone. So I prayed to God and asked him to show me if something is off with Derek, because I can't shake this feeling. <laughs> I got on Google and found a church photo album in Michigan with him, his wife, and newborn baby, getting christened. He had on a wedding ring, was in front of the church with his wife and everything. I sent him screenshots. So he calls and told me he married this woman for 60,000 so he could get his citizenship and that is not his baby. Derek is Nigerian and so is the wife and he is a citizen. I was so torn up by this because I knew I had something with Derek, but he was married. I wanted to believe that this was a marriage arrangement for money, but I couldn't be the side chick, so I ended it. Three weeks later, I got a Facebook message from Derek's sister-in-law. I sent her a message when I found the pictures, but deactivated my account in hopes that the message did not send. Apparently, it did. She and I started talking and I found out that the wife is citizen too and Derek has two kids with her and they've been married for four years. I sent the sister-in-law text, um, voicemails, photos, and everything and the link to Derek's OK Cupid page. I'm not sure if the sister-in-law told his news, told this news to the wife or not since she did not say. I texted Derek because I was so sad that he lied even once he got caught. He ended up calling me, telling me he loves me still, wants to be with me, and knows I feel the same about him too. 
I told him I cannot deal with a married man and I know the real truth. So this is goodbye. I am just so upset by all of this. I really had something with Derek, but there is no way I can ever see him or be with him again. I refuse to ruin a family. I wish men could be honest. What would you have done? Thanks for reading, April. I love your videos and keep up the good work. Damn. That was catfish for your ass. Like, for real? Damn, bitch. You got catfished. Like, um, shit. I feel... I feel bad for Amber, like for real, I feel bad. But you know what? I'm gonna tell y'all something. That's why I stopped fucking with those websites. Those Cupid websites, match.com websites, P what is the other one? POF website. Whatever they call. Those every last one of those websites have nothing but a bunch of motherfucking weirdos on there. Seriously, like when you say when I tell you weirdos, I mean motherfucking weirdos. You get all kind of men. You don't even know if they real or not. And here's my thing. I'm not trying to do no long distance relationship with you so I could keep fucking going back and forth with you over a period of time and I never get to see you. Those be the ones that really be catfished because I'm trying to figure out to this day, still, how you going to be in a relationship with somebody for like 10 years and you ain't never even met them in person yet. They done gave you a billion quadrillion excuses within that 10 years of why y'all have not met up yet. Like, and you still keep going along with the shit. Like, listen, if I met someone online within like two months, we better be seeing each other, especially if we really connected within two to three months, we better be seeing each other physically. Like we better have some motherfucking um, phone calls and we better have some motherfucking FaceTime. This is how I'm going to have to do the shit. You going to have to call me up on the motherfucking phone. Okay. You have to call me the fuck up and you're going to have to be on FaceTime with me. So this is the iPad FaceTime. We're going to just pretend it's the iPad and I'm going to, cause I'm going to need to see you on the phone with me. So I could still verify as you, you know what I'm saying? And I'm going to need you to put a piece of paper up behind you. I'm going to need you to hold a piece of paper up with today's motherfucking date. Okay. So that's what we're going to have to do. But within like three to four months, bitch, we're going to have to fucking meet up. Okay. So yes, a bitch like me, I'm not, listen, we not about to be playing these games with social media and fucking back and forth match.com Cupid POF bullshit sites. No, we we going to have to fucking ver verification, bitch. You know how you get them fucking Instagram out accounts and they verified? A bitch going to have verified. I'm going to have a verified stamp right on my motherfucking FaceTime thing. And I'm going to click verified or fucking decline. All right? That's what the fuck I'm going to have. And once I verify your ass, then we good. But then I'm going to need you to send me a photocopy of your motherfucking license and your goddamn utility bill because I'm going to need to see that. See where you really motherfucking live. I'm just saying. That's why if I have to do all of that shit, I'm not fucking with anybody on any type of those little love websites. I don't know what the fuck they're called. I, my mind is kind of hazy right now. But listen, what the fuck would I do about the shit? Well, Amber tongue smacks okay i did a good tongue smack i think it's because i had a tooth pulled what the fuck i would do is i would give his wife a motherfucking call i'm not sure how you got in touch with his sister-in-law but a bitch would be visiting his home or his wife or giving her a facebook message or a facebook phone call letting her know listen bitch this is what's going on with your nigerian african booty scratching husband okay i'm just saying this is what the fuck i would do because you put your heart into something, you really start feeling the person, you really start liking them, et cetera, et cetera. And then to be disappointed like that is like a really huge disappointment and a letdown. And me personally, I don't know, I, I don't think I have a vendetta against men, like meaning I hate men or I hate all men because I don't feel that way. But I just feel like I be I as a person and as a woman, I have been lied to enough in my lifetime and been mistreated. So therefore, I'm not about to let 
anybody get away with no bullshit, especially something that I put my time in. And not only that, but I feel like it's my duty to warn the next woman about you, regardless if that's your wife, you know what I'm saying? If that's your wife, you shouldn't have done her dirty like that. But me being a woman, I wouldn't want it done to me. And I would, if it was being done to me, I would really appreciate that woman coming and telling me and showing me some proof. You know what I'm saying? Because sometimes not knowing is a fucked up feeling because you walk around and you just be so happy, go lucky. You think the world revolves around you and you good. And then it's like, you got this nigga over here that's just a trifling ass fucking whoremonger. A trifling ass whoremonger. Okay? And he's smiling up in your face. Like, I hate shit like that. So, in my opinion, I think that I would I would say something. I would say something because I would want to know if it were me too. And yeah, she probably ain't gonna believe you. So you'd have to send her the fucking proof. And she's still probably gonna be with him. But here's the thing. At least you told. Her being with him is her choice. You ain't trying to break up no happy home. You ain't saying break out with him, bitch. Break up with him. But you just tell tell her this is what happened. So hopefully you and your husband can work on your marriage so your shit don't happen again. Whatever, you know what I'm saying? But I would tell. Now, if the bitch get out of line with me, like the wife get out of line with me, hold the fuck up, bitch. First of all, I'm not here to start no drama with you because I did not even know about you like you did not even know about me. However, don't disrespect because you can still get it. You can still get your motherfucking ass whooped, okay? So, but I definitely would tell, but... I would definitely, I would definitely tell, but also just keep in mind that those websites where you meet these guys at, I just feel like they're full of shit. They're just all full of shit. They're a bunch of fucking liars and shit. Let me tell y'all, I'm going to even be the first to tell you my shit is a lie. You know why my shit is a lie? I'm going to say why my shit is a lie because I got pictures from like two years ago. On my profile. Well, not all of them. Only only one is like that. So, And I feel like that's a lie because I don't look like that no more. Like, I'm not that thin anymore. You know what I'm saying? And now I definitely don't have all those teeth anymore. So, yes. <laughs> I feel like that part is a motherfucking lie. Um, but everything else is the truth. You know what I'm saying? Because you got to take me for what the fuck I am. What? But, yeah. That's what I would do. I mean, but if you're not open to being... Um, blunt, not even blunt, but if you don't want to tell the girl or the woman, the, the wife, then leave it the fuck alone. But if it keep contacting you, bitch, I would tell. I would motherfucking run. Tell that shit. Be a snitch and motherfucking tell. Okay? So, let's see the next real talk. So, it wasn't too long. Okay, so people, when y'all write me, some people be like, I'm sorry, this is so long. Like, it's like two paragraphs. Damn, if that shit is long to you, I can only imagine what a whole book would be. All right? So here goes the next one. Hi, April. My name is Christine. Oh, yes. You can call me um, Jess. Whatever. Sorry, this is long. Okay, hey, April, you can call me Jess. Sorry, this is so long. My almost three-year relationship recently ended about four months ago. I found out for two of the three years he was seeing two, he was seeing two other girls during our relationship. So I found out for two of the three years he was seeing two other girls during our relationship. He told me he saw me as the perfect girl that eventually he would want to marry me but wasn't ready and that he would probably regret what he did for the rest of his life which is funny because I hear that from all of my exes after the fact that I'm the perfect girl but if I am perfect why don't they actually see what see that when we are together this breakup crushed me my self-esteem is at an all-time low from my knowledge this is the first time anyone has ever cheated on me and betrayed me like this we have not talked at all since this happened. Although I do think of him time to time, I have been slowly moving on and even seeing a therapist once every two weeks. The hardest part of this is understanding my worth. I tend to make every guy my life, and after each failed relationship, I'm stuck wondering who I am, what I like to do, and where I'm going. I'm tired of settling for less than what I deserve just for the hopes of finding love. 
Please help me. I want to learn how I can be happy by myself and to maintain my self-worth in a future relationship. I'm tired of being walked on and disrespected. I'm tired. I'm currently talking to someone, but see myself falling into the same patterns. He texts me and calls me when it's convenient for him. And when he asks to hang out or talk, I'm always available and never say no. In person, I feel a connection. And feel and feel progress that it could lead somewhere. But then he doesn't text me for days on end. A lot of his texts seem to be sexting, sexting, and he doesn't really ask me about myself or my likes or dislikes. And I feel like I'm falling into the same pattern. I'm 30 years old, no kids. I have a good job, own my own car, and own my own home, and take care of myself financially. Why can't I seem to find someone who appreciates me and puts me on a pedestal instead of putting me on a shelf and taking me out when they need me? P.S. I love all of your videos and your honesty. Thanks so much, Jess. Damn. I'm starving right now. So. Seems like Jess is just probably bored with herself. So, basically, Jess needs to know why men are not finding, not finding her attractive, but just finding her. Because she probably is the prettiest thing in the world. It doesn't even matter if you're the prettiest thing in the world. You know what, Jess? Sometimes you got to take a break. I tell y'all this all the fucking time. Sometimes you just have to take a fucking break. Me, personally... I think like when you leave a relationship, you should take time to just heal and think about what you want to do with your life and where you want to be and just time to love yourself. When a breakup, I don't ever see a breakup being like a fun thing, you know what I mean, in a relationship. I would always think of a breakup as just depressing and sad. And then I guess to some people, it don't even matter. They just break up with a person and then move on to the next just that fast, like I guess you just never really cared about the person that you was with for uh, all that time. Even if you were with a person for a few months, like four, like three or four months, I wouldn't say that you necessarily would be depressed about it. But wouldn't you be upset like you put time into that relationship for like even those few months and then y'all broke up? And now it's like me, I would probably be like, well, now what am I going to do? Who's going to talk to me or text me now? I'm just going to have all this free time. You know, but I guess some people just move on because that's just their way of healing or whatever. Me personally, just I can see where you're coming from. Sometimes I would put my husband or just everybody ahead of me, always before me, everybody. I was never in the equation of time for April time. I was always like at the very, very back, like it was like a never ending line. Like when I was almost to that point of April time, something would just jump in front of it and block it off. So it's like a never ending line. You know what I'm saying? Uh, but I think with my last relationship, I realized that with myself, like, why do I attract like such fucking losers or, or whatever, you know, whatever you want to call them. This is what I'm going to do for April. I'm just going to take an entire break from relationships in general. And I'm going to focus on getting money and progressing my life and just doing things that I like. Because I like being in a relationship, but I also like being comfortable and happy to where I don't have to feel uncomfortable and happy around the person I'm in a relationship with. And with that being said, I could only do that with time to myself. And some people, they stop dating for a couple of months, sometimes, some a year. With me, I think, like, me personally, I want to stop dating for, like, a couple, a few years. I guess there's no time frame on it, but, you know, I just feel like sometimes you need time to yourself, like, where you you're not being bothered by anybody the opposite sex so much or the same sex whatever your preference is because they sometimes get you knocked off your your square to where it's like you fucked up in the head mentally you fucked up emotionally you fucked up financially 
physically too. You know what I'm saying? Because you can let yourself go and just start eating a bunch and gaining weight. Then you're, you're fucked up in the head mentally and you're crying all the time. So you're depressed. And then, you know what I'm saying? So then you spent all your money on them. So now you're broke. Like, that's why I just say like this, Jess. Sometimes those bad relationships, they just start to accumulate and accumulate and accumulate and builds up and builds up and builds up. And they just start stacking up and stacking up and stacking up to where it's like you're in this fucking room, this small ass fucking room, and you have nowhere to turn. There's no fucking outlet. There's there's nowhere for you to go. There's not enough space. It's just you're just right fucking there and it's all surrounding you. That's when you have to just fucking Stay in the middle. Stay in the fucking middle of that room and just be like, this is my time. Fuck being with somebody. Because when you're in a relationship with somebody, you always feel the need to have to please them and you want them to please you. So that right there is fucking work in itself. And I'm tired of working so hard for a relationship. I need to work hard for me, okay? I need to work hard to better my life. If I better my life, then my kids' lives are going to be better. You feel me? Do you get what I'm saying? So all of those bad relationships, and it, it doesn't even have to be like a whole bunch of men, but all the bad karma, all the bad situations that you've had in each relationship, that shit starts to cloud you. You feel like you're inside of a cotton ball. And you know cotton balls are big, so you feel like you're inside of a cotton ball and you have nowhere to go. You're just stuck. You know what I'm saying? That's when you start attracting the wrong shit because you've already surrounded yourself with all this negativity. So now what do you got to do? You got to fucking mentally get your shit together to get the fuck out of that room, out of that cotton ball, out there. You know what I'm saying? And little by little, your whole vibe changes. You as a person change. Like with me, I used to love like the bad boy looking type. I still do. You know what I'm saying? But yeah, you, you are a thug looking type, whatever, and I still do. But you got to be a smart, nerdy ass thug with a good ass job to fuck with me, okay? If you ain't got that, then I don't know what to tell you. And that's when you have came out of, I have gotten a little bit out of that cotton ball, a little bit out of that room to where I'm able to say, well, this is what the fuck I want. And if you don't got that, then don't come through, okay? Don't fuck with me. And I also am the type of person now where, listen, nigga, you better have your own shit. You better have your own car, your own place, your own job, your own bank account, everything. You better be legit at one point. That's when you start being really, not really picky, but you start seeing different types of views. You see different people. You see people for who they really are. And you don't put up with certain shit. You know what I'm saying? You, you start being more about yourself. Now, I ain't saying be stuck up. Don't be a stuck up motherfucker, okay? But when you be about yourself, meaning you better yourself. You better your surroundings. Your surroundings change. Negativity don't like to be around somebody that's positive, okay? And so, men, it, it's just weird to how the world works, the universe works, whatever, okay? But it seems like negative motherfuckers always attract negative motherfuckers, you know what I'm saying? When they see somebody that's positive, I ain't trying to fuck with them. Now, me, I'm not positive and I'm not negative. I'm neutral. A bitch can be both when she wants to, okay? But mainly, I've always got a nice vibe and nice attitude about me. You know what I'm saying? I see people in the street. I talk to them. That's just me. I, when I say I talk to them, I see people. Don't be people that know who Muffin is My Lovers is. Just be a stranger. Somebody older. Well, that don't matter. I like to talk to people, so that's what the fuck I do. Okay, and I find that as I have gotten older, I my attitude as a person has changed. I'm not so bitchy, right? Well, I don't know. Maybe I am, but either way, I know I don't put up with no bullshit. But you attract what you what you give off. So instead of worrying about attracting those type of men, worry about you, because I know it sucks. It really must fucking suck to be put on a back burner. Like, it would be nice to be put on a pedestal. Bitch, who you telling? Shit, just a bitch like me would love that. But until I'm I'm treated like that and you can't do that, are you 
I'm just going to sit back and chill and put my own self on my own motherfucking pedestal that I got right here. And until a nigga can do that, then I guess I'll be putting my own self on my pedestal. Stop worrying about finding a relationship because that's when the bullshit just comes at knocking on your motherfucking door. You be like, hello? Oh, hey, I'm an opportunist. I'm a man. I'm an opportunist. And I'm not just saying all men are opportunists, but women too. You know what I'm saying? Sometimes you have to put your foot down. This is what the fuck it is, and this is what the fuck it ain't, okay? And if you don't like it, then bye, Felicia. Bye, Fernando. Bye, Felipe. Bye, motherfucker. Bye. Bye. When you start worrying about the relationship and you put more time into yourself as a person and the things that you want, then the type of people that you socialize with will be totally different. You know what I'm saying? It's fucked up when someone has cheated on you. That, I will tell you, it hurts. It really does hurt. But sometimes you have to take that hurt, which is that room, or that, you know what I'm saying? And turn it into something positive. I don't know. Like, with me, sometimes I could be so revengeful. Like, oh, bitch, you cheated on me? Like, for real? Because at that moment, I'm calling a man a bitch. You a bitch if you cheated. You a bitch, so. Sometimes men can just be a bunch of fuckers, all right? And women too. Don't get it twisted, women too. But me personally, what I would do, you know what I'm saying, instead of worrying about a relationship, because everybody deserves respect, everybody deserves to be treated equally, and we all deserve to be put on pedestals, man or female, we all do. But if you can't find that, and you have noticed that in the beginning, stop sticking around, stop being available to everybody, that's the problem right there, okay? When you always make yourself readily available, then they they see on that shit, they, you have to not be available all the time. I started seeing that like when I was married to my husband. You know what I'm saying? I would always whine to him about, oh, you're always hanging out. You're always out. You're always out. You're always hanging in the street. You're always in the street because, you know, he sold drugs. You're always in the street. You never spend time. Oh, I'm sorry. I'm going to do it. I'm going to do it. Every time I would whine to him and cry about it, literally cry about it, it just wouldn't, he wouldn't do it. He would not do it. He probably would do it one time and then he'd go right back to doing that same dumb shit. Well, eventually a bitch got tired of it. it. It's not that I forced myself to not ask anymore. I just got tired in general of asking, you know what I'm saying? I got tired of it and I didn't beg or whine or cry anymore and then when i stopped doing that that's when he was like hey what's up you're not crying no more see when you when so same scenario same situation when you available all the time they're going to use that to their advantage just like me crying all the time he's going to use that to his advantage now when you see me not asking and not caring then you're like hmm what the fuck is going on why this bitch don't give a fuck about me coming home or not no more you know what i'm saying she don't care same thing goes with being available if you're not available Nigga call you up or text you. Don't text right back. That's the thing, too. Don't text right back. If he take hours or he don't text you for days, bitch, when he texts you tonight, text his ass back like six, seven hours later. That's when you stop making yourself available all the time. As long as your fucking punk ass is available, bitch, they're going to walk all over you. Sometimes you got to put a fucking line down, a motherfucking foot down, and be like, I'm not going to be available today to this motherfucker. I'm not texting back. I'm not even answering this motherfucking phone. Trust me. Can't be so nice all the time. You sometimes got to treat them how they fucking treat you. That's when they seem like they fucking respect your motherfucking ass. You got to disrespect them. Or not even disrespect them. But you got to treat them somewhat the way they treat you. So that they can respect your motherfucking gangster. Like, you know what I'm saying? respect my motherfucking gangster, dude. So that's what the fuck you got to do. But the main thing that you do need to do is focus on Jess and stop opening up the doors to fucking low-life men who do walk all over you and who do take advantage of you. Put your foot down, put a stop to it, and be you, but don't allow anybody to fuck you over while you're being you. Okay, so that was my advice to her. I can't even remember. Did I read two or three? I think I read three, but yeah, I read three. I read two. I read two. 
I'm going to end this real talk. I know it's only two, but I have to get mumsy from school. It's going to be late. And I guess my real, my, my beginning was a real talk too, because I talked about my feelings and I talked about how I felt about my teeth and I cried and anyway, and I'm going to go get something to eat because I'm starving. Like my stomach is like totally growling, but yeah, so let these young ladies know how you felt and Please let me know about the wigs. What you feel about the wig. So on that note, stay diva and delicious. I love you guys and I'll see you on a soon to come video.